So the very first question of our Q&A comes from Amit Sharma. Does planets get combust in divisional charts and moon also gets combust with sun's conjunction? So no, uh, the phenomena of combustion is an astronomical phenomenon, okay? It's, and it's mainly is seen from the sky and the sky is not a divisional chart. Sky is the actual chart. Sky is the D1 chart. So combustion will, of sun and the planets will be used there. But not in divisional charts, no. Planets are simply conjunct sun. Now, yes, in divisional charts, we have degrees, right? So in a way, if let's say Saturn is far away from sun, but it's conjunct sun in Navamsha, that means it should be considered combust. But no, it's not. It's conjunct sun. Then the next question is from Tritankar Sen. Is there a new moon and full moon in D9 and other Varga charts? No. So this is a great segue. That's why I chose this question, actually. It was a great segue. No, no, full moon and no moon, all of these things should be considered from the birth chart. Then, okay, I, I think it's from the same person I'll show, Trikankar Sen. Should we prepare a moon chart for D9 and other Varga charts separately and analysis it according to specific Varga? Yes. Now that's a that's where I would say yes. Like for example, whenever you look at a divisional chart, not only just use the ascendant, use the moon, and use the dasha lagna, meaning making dasha lord the ascendant, and studying the chart from there. Next one is from. Chafai Alex, considering the dashas are calculated by the moon, how important is the moon chart on the prediction? Extremely important. Beautiful segue again. Wow, I'm four out of four. Uh, yes, you never want to not analyze dasha from the moon. Always look at a dasha planet from the moon and what yogas it's creating, what aspects it's getting. Okay. Then unpredictable cool. What does it mean when an ascendant degree is zero or one? How will be the life? Well, one is just gonna be one. You're one degree of Aries ascendant. But the zero, I'm telling you right now, as much as sometimes I've seen zero, zero, zero ascendant. You gotta understand one second here and there and it'll be completely different. So it is very, very, very rare that a person is actually born at the zero ascendant. Unless your parents had a scientific clock, you know, automatic stop and go. So when you were brought out of the womb and your breath, you know, first taken breath, which also is hard to know because sometimes baby may not even cry. And they may just be breathing before even crying. You, zero. Yeah, zero is something that was created by the Vedic scholars, Vedic mathematic, mathematician thousands and thousands of years ago. You know, it's India that brought out the uh, value of zero. So that particular chart, it's like it's in a very independent ether zone, the zero degree. But I'm telling you right now probably 99.999999 percent there will always be some slope of either points or like 0 0.1 or 29.59 or something then lisa blake if you're doing someone's chart can you see when they pass yes you can but it's very difficult like to this day, I haven't been able to successfully, well, even though I haven't even tried predicting somebody's passing away. But yeah, there are, especially like if you use, if you understand two of these dasha, 
if you're going to try to make some predictions on these things, Shula Dasha and Kal Chakra Dasha, one has to know. And I'm sorry, by reading some article on internet, watching some YouTube video, or even buying a book on Kal Chakra Dasha, you do not know Kal Chakra Dasha. Kal Chakra Dasha is the most difficult to analyze. It is the most, I mean, you have to be born as a mission on this earth to like your soul has to be like, I need to master Kal Chakra Dasha. And only then you will be able to understand. People spend 30 years analyzing Kal Chakra Dasha before they can actually make excellent predictions through Kal Chakra. Yeah, you can get lucky here and there. Like, okay, well, you look at Kal Chakra Dasha, you can say, this person's gonna go in two years. Okay, you might got lucky. You, you will not be able to do it all the time. Then in that case, you don't even need Kal Chakra Dasha. I mean, it, it's difficult. Try understanding and studying Kal Chakra Dasha. Try using it. Only that, no Vimshotri, nothing. See how far you go. And one thing I will say to Lisa, don't, uh, one should not be predicting death in astrology. That's one thing you want to stay away from. If you want to learn it, learn it, but don't predict it for other people. There's some heavy karmas involved with that. Then the next one is Shweta Gupta. Does a person born during an eclipse has a special role to play in the world? Yes, they do. And that special role is to actually pay karmas in their own life. First of all, and so the eclipse point is known as two things. Either it can be a kingmaker, okay? Or it can literally take a person into a place which is unseen, unknown, which itself could be extremely powerful. Meaning such a person will never be heard from the world, will never be known in the world, and yet they are the ones who have the most power. So a kingmaker is something that everybody knows. But that unknown factor could be the most powerful. Because when nobody can figure out who's doing certain things, that's power. That's power. So Eclipse chart have a very special place. And usually, to, in my experience, people born on Eclipse have been very successful. Very successful. Okay. Then, Aditi Trivedi, how to see wealth in Hora chart? So, again, there's two types of Hora chart. One is known as the uh, Surya Hora where you have the sun and moon lagnas, meaning sun and moon ascendant in your D2 chart, where you also have to see our planets in one twelve houses or one second house. Because if you're a Leo ascendant in that chart, your planets will be 12th house or the ascendant. If you're a Cancer ascendant chart, it'll be first house and the second house. Then you also have to see, is the person born in the daytime or nighttime? If you're born in the nighttime, then we have to see how our planets situated in terms of planets like Venus, Saturn, Moon, and Mars. Oh, I'm, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of Mars, Saturn, and Moon, not Venus. If you're born in the daytime, then Sun, Jupiter, and Venus have to be seen. During Sandhi, meaning um, sunrise or sunset, Mercury strength has to be seen. And then you have to see how is this, what's the potential of wealth? Will it be from a foreign place? Will it be easy? Will it be hard? Because Leo, planets in Leo signs and their dasha, you'll have to work extremely, extremely hard to attain that wealth. If planets are in Cancer, okay, in their dasha, it shows that one can gain through ease. Yet that doesn't mean that one, so one becomes a billionaire 
by working extremely, extremely hard. One becomes a millionaire because they created a song and now that song is giving them royalties. You know, so if you ask me, I mean, I'll pick the cancer one, you know. So this way I can spend all day doing my Kriya Yoga. Then you have to see this particular chart known as uh, D2 Ayer chart. The D2 Hora Ayer. There you have to look at the strength of the Lagna, meaning strength of the Ascendant. The current Dasha that you're running through, you have to look at the condition of that particular Dasha planet. And that Dasha planet must be creating Dhan Yogas in both in birth and Hora chart. Then you also want to see Jupiter's position in the Hora because wealth, when we say wealth, we always think about the second house, right? Or the 11th house. And the Karka of this is Jupiter. So you have to look at how strength, what strength is Jupiter in. And, and one thing I will say, and then also, it's not just Hora chart, you have to look at Ekadasamsha, the D11 chart, which is also an Ayer chart which shows recognition and achievement. Okay. Then, Nayam, can you prove reincarnation with logic? Since have increased in large scale comparing to 4,000 years ago, if people are decreased to lower class, because of previous life since then why is the population increasing you know it's funny i was actually discussing this with togi we were discussing about reincarnations and souls and you gotta understand like grandfathers of bhishma and this one other person who was involved with uh, indra used to hang out with indra they created certain sins in the astral world. Like they looked at this one, I think Ganga, it was Ganga, who they saw naked and they kept staring at it without warning her. And so now they were had to be coming back onto earth and dealing with that karma. Okay. So what it tells us is that when we look at the concept of new souls, and old souls like one of my biggest quests is to understand what is that first soul why is that soul created in the first place to come and be reborn and this is only my opinion and it could be completely wrong in the future but this is like a prison planet you're coming from a free world because of some sin you have created you're reborn here inside the prison and what happens inside the prison? It's a madhouse. There's psychopaths, sociopaths. You have to pick your gangs. You, you know, got to do everything in a shady manner in order to make your way into it. And those people who are also innocent, they themselves become biggest criminal because that's the life now they have to live. They have to live by those rules, regulations. So what it is, this is like a rehabilitation center. And those who are able to be rehabilitated and not be institutionalized. They're the one who go back to those astral planes, astral worlds. So now imagine if just the physical size of the universe, and this is according to Sri Yukteswar, the physical size of the universe is like the bucket under the balloon that flies. And the balloon itself is the astral plane. So for us, we are looking at 7.1, 7.2 billion people on this planet as something massive, where 900 quadrillion souls are existing on the physical plane and astral plane combined. And souls are coming from astral plane to pay their debt on in, into this prison planet or pl places from other physical bodies of, you know, um, universe or physical planets across the universe when they die, they're perhaps coming onto Earth as this. Um, and it is not just Earth. It could be different, you know, prisons and jails across the universe that you're born in. Now, depending upon the severity of your past life action, 
you either live a great life where you think you have freedom, where you think you have everything and you're satisfied. And depending upon the sin of that soul, you're living in absolute poverty. And the thing is, the increase of population doesn't really have anything to do with what 4,000 years ago was. Because again, mostly everything is an assumption when you're looking in the past. What if in the past we had 19 billion souls on this planet at one point? And yet through prelay, through the apocalypse, everything was wiped out clean and restarted this whole thing. Restarted this creation again. And yet now we're thinking, well, we're at 7 billion. Oh, my God. Well, the one that was there last time was 19.2 billion, maybe 40 billion. Who knows? This is the concept that we have kind of like come to a educated conclusion as to what is happening. You know, the first soul is simply a soul in an astral plane that committed a sin for the first time, committed some egregious thing, and now they have to come back. But if let's say, you know, like the Indra's friend or even Bhishma himself was the Ashtavasu, the eight astral beings who weren't supposed to be here, but they were supposed to pay their karma and then go back. You know, and Bhishma was this uncle of regal uncle, lived a pretty good life. That didn't die a peaceful life, but lived a pretty good life. So depending upon the severity of the sin, one becomes a billionaire, one becomes a millionaire, one becomes a hundred thousand, and the other becomes and in, goes into poverty. Okay, like I was watching this documentary on North Korea, and man, I got just so depressed. I mean, that that is hell on earth. The way each citizen has, it's pretty much a jail. It's pretty much a prison. And I couldn't... I'm like, wow, this is one place. I mean, I'm counting my blessings. You know, if you're, whether you're in India, whether even in China, you should count, uh, count your blessings because that place, oh boy. Then Herms, have man with the moon or Venus ascendant sign more feminine attributes? Like Shukra with Shuk, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so you're saying, oh, that was the next question. So have man with the moon or Venus in ascendant sign more feminine attributes? No, this is all depends because if, see, here's the thing, Venus and Lagna, whether it's a man or woman start, they become excellent diplomats. You want to be a politician? You want to be become a diplomat to some country? You should wish for Venus in the Lagna. And Moon and Venus in the Lagna naturally will make a person very creative, sensual, lustful. The lust, the hunger of lust will never go down. Now, feminine part, it can if it's in a feminine sign. And especially if it's, let's say, also somehow being influenced by mercury sure but it i've seen many masculine individuals with venus and moon in the lagna and you gotta understand venus venus is known as shukracharya and i know some astrologers don't link shukracharya and venus together they think they are two separate things and this is where they will fail this is why most people fail in reciting mantras. People want to recite mantra, whatever they hear from their family, friends, mother and father, because mother and father most of the time are not educated in proper Vedic tantric knowledge. They're just as dumb as us. Somebody has told them and so they tell us. Every time you do a mantra, look at the rishi and look at the deity of that mantra. Because that's what's going to be activated. 
like for example mrityu janya mantra is rudra so before you get all you know excited about doing this mantra you're activating rudra the fierce form of shiva the wild form of shiva so shukracharya was this intelligent you know absolutely beautiful marvelous male figure because the tattva of the venus is watery and it's feminine that's why we see venus as more female thing but it's the energy of shukracharya so anyway i hope this has helped and given insights into your question i will again next week do question here on odyssey see you guys here and remember there's an app here so uh just download the app all right bye bye